Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're up in Iron River, Wisconsin, and today we're gonna have a tip-up party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, we're up in Iron River, Wisconsin, and we're having a tip-up get-together, a tip-up party. And what do you do? Just get a bunch of friends together, right? Yeah, exactly. You punch a bunch of holes, get a bunch of tip-ups out, and then we'll stay nice and warm in the clam shack and wait for them to pop. Yeah, each person in Wisconsin can use three lines. Yep. So each person sets out three. You can cover a lot of area. That's what's fun about it. Cover the whole area cover a ton of water and you never know what you're going to catch. Could be pike, walleyes, bass, could even get a big crappie on a tip-up, you never know. Now, if people get bored, they can jig too, right? There's panfish. Oh, exactly. And we might even jig in the shack, stay warm. Hey, look at this, folks. Blake is in this X600 uh, clam uh, hub shack and, and Blake, what are you doing in here? Dad, I'm watching tip-ups. I'm so comfortable in this clam hub shelter. It's warm. I can literally see the tip-ups right there, see the flag go up, run, and then come right back to my cozy spot. Now, this is the perfect setup for yeah. an ice fishing get-together, yeah, right? Yeah, you can fit a lot of people in here. You can jig in here, you can cook in here. I mean, it's the perfect, perfect hub shelter for a party. Well, Blake's comfortable. We're gonna catch some fish, right? Oh, we're gonna catch a lot of fish. Hey folks, let's show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Oh my gosh, oh, yes. look at the head on that. And look at that mouthful of weed. Yes. Look at that pike. Are you having fun with the tip oh, I'm having a great time. Love Beaver Dan. Oh, look at that, Blake. Oh, Holy cow. Oh, my God. Look at that pike, Blake. Oh, my gosh. Look at the size of this pike. Oh, my gosh. That is a trophy pike right there, pal. Oh, dude. Oh, man, is that, that gorgeous. Look at this guy, folks. This is a beauty. Oh, wait till you see the tummy on Look this guy. On oh, oh, nice bass. <laughs> I'm bullet. Look, pull that yeah, up. There you go. You've proven that that will call fish in. Yeah, there's no no. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, oh look at that. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. You know, they come in and what we do is, we, we, again, we want to hear their story. We want to make sure they're okay. We want to give them guidance. A lot of times we call it quarterbacking their case, right? Help them put themselves in a position where they can get the best medical treatment they're taken care of. What we want to do is make sure that the only thing they have to worry about, John, is getting better, right? And we focus on everything else. Fish on, Josh! Dad! Okay, here we go. Right. Let's see. Feel Let's pretty see. decent? Yeah, he took two runs, so I don't know if it's a bass or a Oh, pike. that's a nice pike. Oh, there you go. Nice one. Look at that, Josh. Turn him this way. Uh, there we go. That's a beautiful fish, nice. Blake. Nice! Yeah, that's a good job. Come on up here, you guys. Um, let's talk a little bit here, Blake. Uh, the tip up running is fun. It's a workout. Oh, yeah. I've been going back and forth, back and forth. Today, we've spread out the tip ups quite a bit. So I've got my workout in. So what kind of depth was this pike in? This one was in about 16, 17 feet in the okay. green weeds. And this is like we talked about in the open, Josh. You know, getting a spread of tip ups and taking people to a lake where there's action. Exactly. I mean, if it's your first time ice fishing, or if you've been fishing for 20 years, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going out and catching a bunch of fish, having a lot of action, whether it's pike, bass, walleyes, panfish, and these inland lakes are perfect for that. Yeah, and I mean, seriously, you got a chance at a big fish. Nothing wrong with that, though, you know? Oh, that's a good fish. Right I mean, there. he took two big runs, and that was a lot of fun. I know, you love the tip-ups. I know, it was worth the run over here. Ooh, Rob, come on over. I need some help, buddy. This is definitely not a panfish, I don't think. It is, it's a big one. Yeah, no kidding. Here, let's see, here he comes. Here he comes, I think. 
Let's see. Oh, a decent pike right there on that little Castmaster, which I love. And uh, that Castmaster is good for anything, isn't it? That small one, Rob? Yeah, no, that that tipped with the plastic or a little waxy. I mean, crappies, bluegills, perch, you know, anything, you know. All right, another beaver dam up there. Okay, tell the folks how you do this now. All right, hit it hard. And? It was spinning before. Okay. It could be in the weeds or he could have dropped it. Some of the bass usually drop the... Oh yeah, yeah. show he, the folks how big that sucker is. Yeah. So that's a big sucker minnow and a lot of times they'll just uh, fall Well, flag. you see that someone ate the fin. No, that's Josh bites those off. Oh, I didn't know no, that. No, and as a matter of fact, let's show how Josh, Josh does that. He bites them off so that they can't trip the flag, but Interesting. that was an extra strong minnow there. So Josh, Blake had uh, that sucker trip the flag. So I'll show the folks what you do to kind of maim the minnow a little bit so he yep. doesn't uh, have enough strength to tip it. Yep, so I already pinched the top of the tail off and I'm gonna pinch the bottom part of the tail off. And the reason I do that is with that tail, they're very strong and they will swim way up in the water column when a fish comes up to grab it. So what that does is it they just can't swim as fast, but they still have the motion. So that thing's wiggling like crazy trying to get away and that fish can come in from behind it and grab it. And the nice thing in the winter is the fish aren't as aggressive. So right. if that, have, that minnow has his whole tail, he's probably not gonna be able to catch up to it. You notice it's spinning a lot, a lot. So what I do is I lift up the beaver dam and set the hook. And let's hope it is not. Oh, it's running, it's running, folks. Uh, you're, you, you know, you sit in that clam tent until somebody yells flag and then you run out, right? Yes, I am the first to run to the tip ups. Well, what do we got, any size here? Uh, I don't know yet. Boy, he had a lot, a lot of line oh, out yeah, there. Oh yeah, it was spinning like crazy. I was like, Ryan, hurry, get yeah. over here. Here All comes right. Josh to see what we got here. What do you got going? I don't know. Oh, there's leader. There's Ooh. leader. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Nicely done there, Blake. That's Look a beautiful that. bass. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful bass. Was that? Was he in the weeds? Yeah, he was in the deep weeds in that 14 to 18 feet. They're green down there, so it's holding a lot of fish right now. I wanted to ask you too, Josh, you know, on this tip-up fishing, uh, Blake kind of showed how to do it. So you just tighten up and then set it? Yep, tighten up and set it. And you want to make sure they're kind of going away from you. If they're straight down, you kind of want them to move off to the side so you can kind of get them right in the corner. Um, but yeah, just set the hook hard. We're using 50 pound of Brazex uh, leader material. So mm -hmm. you can set the hook pretty hard and you don't have to worry about them snapping off even if it is a big pike. So. Nice job, Blake. That's awesome. a nice bass. Yeah, that is a beauty. So basically, this is a real simple rig. You got an eagle claw treble hook, looks yep. like about a number six or eight. Yep, number eight. And then uh, underneath, you got a lively sucker. Yep. And how do you use your, your Helix 7 to set the tip up? So that's actually a big mistake people do, is they don't use this when they're setting tip ups, especially in weeds. They'll use a depth bomb. So in here, we're in 18 feet of water, but the weeds come up four feet. So if you're using your depth bomb and you put it three feet off the bottom, you're still gonna be in the weeds. Right. Now, using the helix you can actually make sure you're a foot above the weeds okay <laughs> i so want to be a foot to two feet above the weeds and i'm watching it on there and that's how i set all my tip ups every hole that i'm putting a tip up in i bring the helix with and i know i'm at the right depth okay so let's let her go down there and you can see it going down on the screen yep and that is going to be right about there is my marker okay and it uh it's set at the perfect depth as it is it's about one foot off the weeds and you can see it on your locator and you're yep. exactly right and then uh, do you put a little marker on your line then? Yep, so I use a little slip bobber knot as my marker. Okay, so it's a little slip bobber knot. We're taking a look at that now. And then when you get a fish, you can just set it back and you're in the exact same depth that yep, you were before. Yep, right back up and you're good to go. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea using the locator to set a tip up. All of my tip ups I have it with. Breaking news. Beat the cold weather with a trip to Fleet Farm. They've got lots of items to keep you warm on and off the ice, like jackets, base layers, boots, hats, gloves, and much more. Flag! Yay! Yay! We got a flag! All right, let's oh, see here. I feel some weight. Good job, Blake. Aren't you proud of Blake, Josh? She runs to all the yeah, tip-ups. Yeah, she does. She's doing great. She's the first one there. Yep. Getting my exercise in. And let's see what we got here. Man, Hopefully a bass. Took a lot of line out. Wow. Do the bass take a lot of line out too, Josh? A lot of times they will, yeah. Oh, here he is. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, a decent, decent pike. eater yeah. pike. Yeah. It's not a bad one. Hey, you know, Blake, I know that you love coming up to Iron River, Wisconsin. And, and, and Josh, you know, you, you guys are really blessed within a, you know, 40-mile drive of Iron River. Can you name some of the good lakes you like? Yeah, we got a lot of them. Um, we got the Eau Claire chain, Pike chain, Nimicoggin. You got Lake Nebagam and Minnesing. There's just so many lakes. And then you got a bunch of small lakes as well. So there's a lot of options. And obviously, we filmed a bunch on Chewamigan Bay. That's only 40 minutes away, too. So there's, that's the great thing about this area. There's just so many options. Sure mention too your guide service you're multi-species right yeah multi-species i mean basically whatever customers want to fish for we'll fish for no matter what time of year it is and your chugamagon bay bite is 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 trout lake trout and coals coals sometimes we'll get into white fish brown splake i mean that's a that's a great bite and that's just starting to get going now too so that'll be fun Flag! boy i'll tell you what oh. Blake ran about 200 yards to that one, didn't you, Josh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> starting to go. You know, and, you know, the size isn't great, but I'll tell you what, you got action all day. Here he comes. Hey, I hope. And Where is he? Let's see what we got there, Blake. Should see him here pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, no He kidding. might be down in the weeds. Yeah. There are a lot of weeds, weeds in down this here. deep of water. Oh, yeah. there you go, well, Blake. Yeah. Go. Another weeds. another oh. good eater. Some fresh and those are the type of weeds, huh? That we're fishing yeah, there, just Josh. Yeah, nice green cabbage. These clear lakes will uh, will stay green all the whole year, most of the time. But like you said, you know, out here, you know, the size isn't the greatest. There are some nice fish out here, but I have a lot of lakes where it's action, where you're going to have a lot of flags. You're going to have a ton of action. You're going to be running all day. Yeah, you might get a couple of picture fish, but it's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. But I also have a lot of lakes where we can go, and you might. Might only get eight to ten bites all day but they're gonna be big fish and I don't want people to feel guilty about keeping a pike that size because there's so many pike in these lakes to take a few out and the meat is white and delicious yeah and it's not gonna hurt the population because like you said there's a lot of them we were fishing the lakes around Iron River, Wisconsin, a six-hour drive from Milwaukee, seven hours from Chicago, and three hours from Minneapolis. This fight is between you and the fish. The lake may get unruly, but our motors quiet the noise. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Folks, I drive 40,000 miles a year. I use Amsoil Synthetic Oil for two reasons. I don't have to change my oil for 25,000 miles. My truck runs better and I get better gas mileage. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here that Johnson just spray it right off. And obviously, you got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Hey, John, Blake just caught one over there. Caught two in a row, actually. What do you got going here, man? Definitely a nicer pike. I uh, just saw it go by the hole. Okay, let's see what you got. Oh, you did see him go by the yeah, hole. He finally, he's right here. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, look, at that's a beautiful fish. That's a beautiful fish, buddy. Taking another run on you. Taking another run on you. Do you know, was this a deep tip up? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think it's in about 20. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Now, there is a beautiful pike if you can get him through the ice. Oh, oh, that is a dandy, one. isn't it, John? Oh yeah. And yeah. you know, you know, you you and Josh have been friends how many years? Oh man, we've been friends probably 25 years now. You've been fishing with them all that time, and uh, you explore all the lakes up here too. And there's a lot of lakes that, as Josh and I just talked about, with pike, so you, they're easy to target. Oh yeah, nice, nice quality fish like these and I mean like he was saying there's a lot of lakes that have a lot of smaller fish but it's a lot of action and then you get some bigger fish like this. When you set your tip up and say say this is 18 feet of water how far above the bottom do you want that minnow swimming? Uh, normally for pike you know you could go four or five feet above and then I mean if you got weeds I mean sometimes you could even put it up higher but I, 
around four or five feet. Hold that out. I mean, that's a gorgeous fish right there, isn't that? And uh, that's one with good genes that you want to release, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll put this one back here shortly. So. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Yeah, it's not that cold today, but when it is real cold, you want to get them back in because their eyes will freeze. Is that the deal when yeah. it's real cold? Yeah, they'll freeze up and their gills also will, will start to freeze and they'll have a hard time reviving. But them. today it's above freezing. Oh, so. yeah. Well above freezing. Yeah. Today. Nice job, man. Thank you. This feels like a good fish. It's taking out a lot of line. Oh, Ooh. there's a nice pike of root there, bad guys. Nice pike. There that actually go. is a nice pike, yeah. Josh. Good build on that. Got a tummy on it and everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, we were talking before, Josh. Uh, you know, if you, if you guide a group of people, they can decide what they want to fish for, right? Yeah, exactly. Just tell me what you want to fish for and we'll go fish for it as long as there's a good bite going on and there usually is. Well, you told us today to expect a lot of flags, which we have gotten, but you know, you can get a big one, but you know, again, this is, Blake, you love this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, even though they're not giants, they're so fun and to have a group of people out here running for tip-ups, a family, you know, these fight really fun and you know, they're decent sized fish. And Josh, you know, that, again, the, the eating quality of those is superb. And I was kind of talking to John about it before. You have so, some lakes up here that have so many of these pike in them, it's probably a good idea to keep a few. Yeah, a lot of these lakes, there's too many of them. It would actually do the lake really good to, to keep some of them. Now, does um, time of day make a difference on this tip-up fishing? Yeah, I always like kind of mid to late morning, and then generally the last couple hours of the day is pretty good. Midday is a little slow most of the time. That's when you cook your Johnsonville. Exactly. That's the best part of the day. Should we do that now? Let's do it. It's officially ice fishing season, and nothing beats a hot Johnsonville out on the ice. Am I right? That is very true. And today I cooked the Johnsonville Original Brats. They're made with 100% premium cuts of pork. All you have to do is cook them on the grill for about 15 to 20 minutes on low to medium heat until they're golden brown, and they are delicious. Give them a try. All right, here we go. Oh, those are good. I love the originals, and the best part is you don't need ketchup or mustard. They have right? so much flavor as it is. Nothing beats it on the ice. They're so good. Johnsonville Original Brats. Find them at your favorite retailer today. Ooh, there we go. Got one, John. You know, I'm not driving my ATV too much. That can spook fish too, huh? It can, especially when you don't have much snow. It will. Yeah, yeah. It will Ooh, there spook. we go. There Another pike a -roo. There's a pike. And uh, time of day can make a difference, you know, when you're talking about the bass too. And, and usually that uh, 2.30 to 5 o'clock before it gets dark is the time for that. And that's what it's been lately, so I'm hoping they fire up. But one thing you can do too, and that's what I'm doing right now, and I actually just did this, this one. I'll take my helix and I'll go to each hole and I'll make sure the minnows are in the right spots. You know, make sure your slip knot on your marker hasn't slid at all so they're not in the weeds. Make sure that minnow's lively and just bring them up, check the minnow and put them back down. And what that's going to do is that's going to get your minnows livelier. You're double checking to make sure your depth's good. And I literally just rechecked this one a little bit ago and it popped. And so it, yeah. That's so going to help. So there could be a fish around and just not interest until you start moving that minnow Exactly. A bit. And then he starts swimming and it'll bring him right in. Hey, Josh, find me something on the jig stick. That's right at the bowl right now. Okay, then what, do you, what is it? Look, it's medium-sized pike on the jig pole. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, guys. A little more fun to catch them on the jigs today. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Josh, you know, it's been a tough jig bite today because I got Blake, you, my, me, John. We've been jigging all day, and normally we'll get bass, uh, crappie, or bluegill, right? Yeah, normally we do. They're just completely off them. I mean, really, the only thing biting our pike. John, that was fun on a jig stick, though. Oh, yeah, it's way more fun on a jig ball. <laughs> yeah. You know, Josh, what's kind of interesting about these deep, clear lakes up here in the Iron River area, your weeds will stay green pretty much all winter long, huh? They will, and that's what's going to hold the bait fish, which is going to hold the game fish as well. And so you mark the weed lines when you're out here in your in your boat this summer and come back out and you you know where the weed lines are. Yep, I mark those spots in the helix, so I have them all in my, my helix that I carry out here, and you find those weed patches, and that's where they're going to be, especially the inside turns or the points. And what's interesting, too, folks, uh, this lake has 35, 40 feet of water in it, and your weeds grow down to about 20 feet? Yeah, down to about 20 feet. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. That's a perfect spot for fish. And they grow tall, too. Yeah, and that holds oxygen and bait fish. It does, almost to the end of the winter. 
The Fleet Farm John Gillespie's 2024 fishing contest is underway. To enter, simple. Just snap a picture of your trophy catch and go to a Fleet Farm store to get an entry blank or go to fleetfarm.com to download an entry blank. Hey, hey, Josh Tegan here. You know, I guide all winter long in some very harsh conditions on Lake Superior and on the inland lakes. And one product I use a lot is Amsoil Quick Shot. This allows me to keep my machines running smoothly all winter long, even in the worst conditions. Folks, I'm at Clam Headquarters in Rogers, Minnesota, and you know, almost all of our suits float if you fall through the ice. But there's some other safety precaution measures you should take, and you got tools for that. Absolutely, there's two in particular. The first one is this floating set of ice picks. You can see I wear it around my neck, and if there's an unforeseen circumstance where you fall through, I can grab the ice and get myself out of there. Super easy, you don't know they're there, and when you need them, you need them. And the other one in your hand is an emergency throw rope. So you might see a situation to where your friend has fallen through the ice. Now you can throw a rope to them and help them get to safety. Yeah, two really important tips there. And again, these are the floating ice picks and the emergency throw rope. For more information on all of our ice fishing gear, go to clamoutdoors.com. This one has been fighting for a while, guys. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but he's taken a few runs. Well, that sun just popped out, Josh. I wonder if that's gonna help us. Yeah, it can't hurt. Oh, here we oh, go. Not a bad one. Look at it again. Did you like, take another little run on you there, Blake? Yeah, it never gets old. <laughs> now, they're so much fun to catch. Yeah. And they almost always cooperate, no matter what, what weather conditions there are, too. You that know? is what's fun about pike. Yep. That's a nice one, nice. Josh. Nice! Look at the head on that pike, too. Hey, yeah. guys, though, seriously, you know, the, the sun just popped out for the first time today. Yeah. And, you know, we haven't had luck on the bass or the panfish, <laughs> so the sun can't hurt, right? No, it can't hurt at all, and this is a good sign. I mean, it popped out for a second, and we got a nice pike, so. A couple of things that you need to have tools-wise when you're doing this pike fishing, folks. You want to point that spreader out, Josh? Yeah. And that actually helps you get the hook out pretty easy, right? Yeah, always bring at least two pairs, because sometimes they'll, they'll throw it off and you'll lose it down the hole, but that yeah. helps immensely to get that hook out. And a good pair of pliers, right? Yes. And you know, Eagle Claw makes great tools. You can get them right on uh, their website yep. or at Fleet yeah, Farm, right? Yeah, very good. Tool. But a spreader and a pliers, extremely important. Must have. Especially for today, it's been a crazy awesome pike day. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got here, buddy? I don't know yet. I'll tell yeah, you what, we <laughs> went through another lull, didn't we? Yeah, a really big lull, and finally, finally seen a tip up go up and. Feel any weight? Yeah, it's feeling heavy with head head shakes, but I haven't seen it yet. All right, this is the same one we caught that big pike in earlier. Oh, oh my gosh! Wait, do you oh. folks see the size of this large oh, mouth bass? Sense. Wow, <laughs> that is just gorgeous, John. I cannot believe that. We, we should let him get every Jeez. tip up because he only catches the trophies. I mean, hold that baby out. That is a beauty. Wow, and this is the same hole or close to the same hole where we caught that big pike earlier yeah it's right next to it so i mean i don't know if this is just a big fish area or what but holy smokes this is the biggest one we've seen yeah that is a gorgeous fish we're getting towards the end of the day here john you never know maybe we'll have a little furry of activity yeah that's what we're hoping for that was a pretty good fight too for a bass yeah yeah big head shakes yeah nice fish what do you got it's a really nice fish i don't know what it is i'm sure it's a pike but okay Wow, what a fun day. And I've been fighting them a while. Have you? Ooh, oh, there's there a dandy. Look at this pike, folks. In a All tiny right. wilderness there lake, you, you know that? Yeah, that's a good I, one. Right? That's a pretty fish. Now, are we getting the pattern down? Are we getting most of our tip-ups in deeper water? Yeah, deeper weeds are definitely the ticket. And it, it it's generally that way out here just because there's clear water and the weeds are green down there. But yeah, most of these fish are coming in that 14 to 18 feet. That's a pretty fish. What is that, 30? Yeah, I bet that's 30. Josh Tigan guides Bayfield County on a daily basis. For more information, give Josh a call. That phone number is 715-813-0575. 813-0575. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. There's still lots of great ice fishing gear in stock at Fleet Farm. Find tip-ups, jigging combos, ice shelters, electronics, accessories, and much more in store or online at Fleet Farm.
Bluetooth.com. Uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. Hi, I'm Pete Mayna, and I think most people agree that rust sucks. What I use to help prevent rust and unrust things is Amsoil MP, Amsoil Metal Protector. One of the great advantages to ice fishing, Josh, up here in Iron River, is seeing a beautiful sunset like that. I mean, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's beautiful. What a great end of the day. I mean, just watching that, it's just beautiful. And you know, we didn't have what you would call a sensational day in terms of big fish, but you know, that's what you promised. Get a couple guys and gals out of here and, and run for tip-ups. Yeah, it's just fun to catch fish and chase flags. You know, we caught a lot of little pike that we didn't film, but we had, I mean, how many flags we had today? 30? Maybe that, more, and it's just a lot of fun. Is that normal? Yeah, that is normal. That's why a lot of times, you know, if you're thinking about getting into ice fishing, but you think it might be boring, where you don't just want to sit on the ice and not catch anything all day, these are your perfect trips. And you still have a chance of catching a few nice fish, which we did get a few nice ones today. Yeah, and you brought up a good point. You know, if people don't want to make the investment into ice fishing gear, hire, hire a guide. Right? Yeah, exactly. You're going to go out, you know you're going to catch fish, and you're going to have a fun day, and you're going to learn something, too. Well, hey, man, appreciate it. Yeah. I had a great time. Thanks for coming on. And, up. folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. Don't know we're going to fish yet. We will find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Mm -hmm.